Among the five easiest herbs that anyone can grow at home, my top recommendation is mint. This actually tends to grow as a bush, so you need to contain it in a pot. If you do not grow it in a pot, but instead in ground directly, it will take over your entire garden and you don't want that to happen. To grow it in a pot, all that you have to do is remember, we spoke about what is a node. Node is where you see a leaf coming out or another branch coming out of the plant. For example, here, here we have a node in this plant. You see, there are two stems coming out of it. We remove these stems and we put this in water. And just like your pothos, this point will also develop roots. Once you see the roots coming out, you can put this mint in the soil and within a couple of days, it will start becoming bigger and bushier. Now, one problem that you might face in this cutting method is that the roots have come out, you have put it in soil, but still the plant starts drooping down and ultimately dies. That happens when your plant undergoes shock. Now, first the plant was in water when it was a cutting. Life was very easy for that plant. Water was easily accessible, but when you shift it to a pot, water is not that easily accessible. In that case, what you should do is try to keep your plant in a place where there is no harsh sun. Secondly, ensure that the soil has water every time it dries out. By doing this, you will reduce the failure rate and to improve the success rate with your cuttings, always start with three to four cuttings so that there's a good chance that at least one of them will survive. The second herb that anyone can grow is a basil. Now, there are kinds of basil in the market. There's Italian basil, there's Thai basil that you use in food and there's holy basil as well. The main difference is that holy basil specially is used in Asian culture a lot. For traditional reasons, people use them for religious values and also for medicinal values. Interestingly, a research paper that came out, they looked at the chemical composition of Tulsi. Tulsi is holy basil in Hindi, which is my mother tongue. Tulsi has about 40 to 50 metabolites. When I say metabolite, it means the chemicals that it comprises of. And most of these metabolites are known to have antifungal, antiviral and even anti-cancerous values. For that reason, you can try growing a holy basil. Otherwise, just for taste, you can have Italian basil or the Thai basil in your area. You can start the basil from a seed in a seedling tray or a pot like this. Take a bunch of seeds. Try to put two in each gap. Bury them in about one or two centimeter deep soil. This is how your basil seedlings will look in 10 to 15 days. Once they all develop, what I try and do is separate them. And I try to grow only one basil in each pot. This pot I feel slightly smaller for this size of the basil. To allow it to grow bigger, what I'm going to do is transfer it into about 6 to 7 inch pot. For repotting, we block the drainage holes at the bottom so that only water goes out and not the soil. We gently pull out the plant. If it doesn't come out easily, what I try and do is place the stem between my fingers, give it a gentle nudge. And you see the plant was actually root bound. What do I mean by root bound? That means that there was not enough space for the roots to grow. The soil was not enough for the plant. And that was probably limiting the size of this plant here. We fill up the gaps with soil. The soil that I'm using here is the standard potting mix that I recommend. Coco peat, garden soil and compost, all in equal proportions. Try and keep the top one inch empty in this so that whenever you add water, there's enough space for the water to sit and be absorbed in the soil. Similarly, you can grow another herb, rosemary. I've grown this rosemary here in the mug. I've ensured that there is a drainage hole in the mug. And this is what I love about these small plants. They can be very conveniently grown in anything that has a drainage hole. For rosemary as well, the care remains the same. The sun should be good, which is three to four hours of direct sun and water whenever the soil is dry. Some problems that you might run into while growing herbs, you know how I love talking about watering, but you have to also be careful of the sun. These plants like sun, 
but if it's direct noon sun it will start burning the leaves if you look at the leaves they're quite delicate so ensure that either you're getting the morning sun or the evening sun with herbs you will not get a lot of insect problem because most of these plants are actually kind of insect repellents so they will not attract a lot of insects however if you do see some aphids growing here and there or mealybugs use the neem oil solution and spray it on the infected parts if it's just one or two leaf you can just pluck it out and remove it as well